Welcome back, everyone. We have an update from Clean Inc., which trades on the NASDAQ under the symbol CLNN. It's a late clinical stage biopharmaceutical company focused on improving mitochondrial health and protecting neuronal function to treat neurodegenerative diseases. Happy to welcome back President and CEO Rob Etherington. Rob, nice to see you again. Please remind our conference viewers what your drug is and what therapeutic areas you're currently targeting. Thanks, Anna. Pleasure to be here. My drug is CNMAU8. I'm holding it here in my hands. Um, people with neurodegenerative disease, which include amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, you know, the whole ice bucket folks, uh, formerly called Lou Gehrig's, but we call it ALS, is our key focus. Um, but the same asset, same dose, has also been uh, explored in the multiple sclerosis study. And we presented uh, late stage data from that program showing remyelination and neuron protection at the American Academy of Neurology late break session in San Diego a month ago. Wonderful. And the last time you spoke to our audience, you discussed the regulatory pathway and some upcoming meetings with the FDA in regards to the ALS indications. So give us an update with that status. So all of us who follow the FDA have been watching a number of headlines. The agency, of course, is uh, in the middle of um, some changes, uh, is an understatement, I should say. But uh, nonetheless, we have a meeting planned that we're expecting late, later this quarter. So that's it's now late May. So you can do the math and figure out we're meeting, we're meeting them in June uh, to discuss our statistical analysis path for our neurofilament data. Now, this, this requires a little bit of understanding. So neurofilament um, light is a biomarker that can be measured in the blood, and it's indicative of a problem. In this case, a disintegrating neuron. So let me just give a metaphor because in the news is President Joe Biden's prostate cancer. We wish him well. Um, but what was also disclosed in the headlines in the last um, 24 hours is that he had not done a recent PSA. So a prostate-specific antigen is an example of a prostate going awry, and it's a blood test. If I have neurodegenerative disease, a blood test that tells me that my neuron is being compromised, attacked, and leaving a debris, a skeletal remains of its destruction in the blood is called neurofilament light. And the reason why this is relevant is because there is another drug in ALS for a very small subset of ALS patients that was approved on a neurofilament change alone. So CLEAN presently has a $45 million funded bless them, from the National Institutes of Health, they funded a $45 million compassionate use program called an Expanded Access Protocol. That's its proper vernacular. And this has enabled um, 170 uh, participants to come on our drug um, funded by this NIH work. And these are people that are very ill. They have not been able to get concluded, um, uh, not been able to get enrolled, rather, into other ALS clinical programs. And by consequence, they are looking for every option. And so uh, we have been able to fund that program with this capital from the National Institute of Health. And what is being assessed there is neurofilament levels. And so what the FDA said is evaluate that program and let's see if from these many participants, 170 which is about 3x the number we had from the Harvard Healy program where we already showed them a neurofilament benefit that was statistically significant in a pre-specified way. Let's see if this EAP is concordant, if this data syncs together, shows more evidence of that neurofilament benefit. And that data comes to clean in the summer. So this meeting with the FDA is to basically show them our analysis plan and then get that data verify it's concordant, aligned, supportive, the same as what we already showed them, and then to file um, the potential for filing a new drug application for the possibility of accelerated approval. And this, by the way, is all independent from the survival data that we just we have been showing and we just did show new data this spring. So we have a robust conversation that we'll be having with the FDA coming up. That's the net. Wonderful. Great news on that front. And assuming you're successful in your clinical trials with the NIH-sponsored EAP, when do you plan on filing an NDA? And will that be under the accelerated approval pathway? So at the moment, we believe that that's the right pathway, accelerated approval. Um, the survival data may change the discussion. Hard to know. We don't know yet. And to answer your question on timing, the plan is to file that in the fourth quarter.
this year. So in other words, um, this could lead, if this data is positive and if the FDA is aligned, to the consideration of, a, a, um, of an advisory committee for the possibility of approving CWAU8 for ALS sometime in 26. Wonderful. And you also recently presented some interesting multiple sclerosis data at the American Academy of Neurology. Can you share some of those results? Um, I can. We presented at the late break session, excuse me, data that showed the CNMAU-8 in our visionary MS study. And so just to give your viewers a little insight to what that is, we enrolled a stable relapsing remitting multiple sclerosis participants that had chronic optic neuro neuropathy. So lesions, MS lesions in their, in their optical tract had compromised their vision or had compromised their cognition. They had what's called an MS cognitive fog. Um, this is a huge issue. This remains actually one of the leading um, medical needs in MS patients is that we've stopped the attack of the MS, but the earlier attacks has caused functional compromise, either cognitively or visually. And what we showed in that uh, late break session is that the long-term experience numbering over three years of follow-up showed that the functional changes of vision improvement and cognition improvement that we'd already shown um, was nicely correlated with what are called paraclinical biomarkers, namely MRI and another assessment of the visual field of the optical nerve that is into the visual cortex. So what we showed is that we were protecting neurons and we showed data that was indicative of remyelination. This is a holy grail medical need in MS to improve cognition or vision through remyelinating a damaged neuron. And again, this is the same dose, same drug that patients were taking as they are doing so in the ALS program. So what we have some opportunity here is a little bit of a pipeline and a product. Now, most investors are more focused on ALS because ALS is a quicker regulatory path in principle. The MS, um, the MS uh, disease would require us to conclude a phase three program, which still needs to commence. So we're some years away before we could commercialize an MS, but both data are very interesting, including two potential strategic partners. And with that said, with your MS program moving forward, are you planning to meet with the FDA in an end of phase two meeting? And do you anticipate yeah, initiating yes, yes, phase yes. three? So that, so that meeting will be in the end of the year. We've now got everything we, we need for that meeting and we have submitted for the agency um, to organize that meeting. Um, and we'll, we'll, that meeting, as I say, will be in second second half of the year. And Shay asks, the ALS and MS, were these studies similar in nature? And can you talk a little bit about the size and duration of these studies? Uh, very different, actually. They both were neurodegenerative disease, because ALS and MS is neurodegenerative disease. But the ALS study, one was a six-month study, one was a nine-month study. Um, shorter, because uh, an individual that's been diagnosed with ALS and then is given a sentence of mortality or, or death, uh, two to five years, um, ALS patients appropriately don't want to go into a long placebo controlled study. They want to get as much help as they can as fast as they can. The MS is different. The MS study was a 12 month study. So six, nine, six, nine, six months, nine months for ALS, 12 months for ALS, uh, for MS, excuse me. And the endpoints were different. Um, uh, in the case of ALS, we're really looking for functional, a, a global functional scale, as well as whether or not patients are living longer uh, and whether or not they clinically worsen. In the case of MS, as I said, we're looking for visual change or cognition change. Amy asks about what are the current approved alternatives? She understands they're very old. So what's the largest benefit to your new drug? So Lou Gehrig was diagnosed in the 30s, the 1930s, and he famously lent his name to the disease. We've corrected that and now call it ALS um, uh, uh, all the time. But it took 60 years for the very first drug to be approved. That drug is really is all. It was approved in 95 by the US FDA. Subsequently, it was approved in pretty much every other regulatory key market worldwide. And this is the tragedy. Today, that is the main drug that I would be prescribed. There is another drug that's been um, uh, developed in Japan that is available in this country for some individuals um, and is available in a very small set of countries worldwide called um, Radicava or Adaravone. It's, it's not often prescribed anymore, unfortunately. Um, and then that's it. That's it. 
Wow. So, so really just really is all a generic drug now for 30 years and um, really is all everybody's on it because it gives a, a few months of extra survival. And so, but, but other than that, relatively little clinical benefit. And so what our drug is doing differently is as the neuron is attacked, it loses its energy in order to fight back. And our drug enables uh, the bioenergetic metabolite support that the, the neuron needs to basically do its function, its daily housekeeping. The way that you and I move and walk and talk and eat and chew and breathe, that requires a lot of energy. And it's a great choreography of muscle movement that we don't even think about. In an ALS patient, they're losing this. And our drug is enabling that to improve with the goal being um, to keep them alive longer is our prayer. Wonderful. Last question for you. You can close on this. Uh, what is your perspective on the shareholder opportunity investing in clean? Are there any comparables as to what clean can become? Well, one, one good example is there is another ALS company that um, unfortunately um, now had to withdraw their market because um, they their confirmatory phase three study was not in fact confirmatory in any way. But they were, you know, kind of trading in the market doldrums um, at the beginning of the stage as they were a young private company working to get clinical benefit. And then they got a, a, a FDA approval and they quickly were on track to sell $400 million of their drug in year one. Uh, and that took them to a two plus billion market cap. So it's extraordinarily different than our small market cap at the minute, um, as we still wait ourselves for FDA's opinion. So you can certainly sense, um, we do believe that we could sell up to $400 million in year one as well, if we were approved. And that would be obviously a completely different market cap than our present number. Rob, uh, fascinating, such important work you're doing. Thank you for this update. And we look forward to hearing the positive results the next time you're on our conference. Thank you, Anna. It's a pleasure. All right, everyone.